Yes. Pawana's buyer, who lived in a nearby village, confirmed he was taking the nine-year-old as his second wife. I'm 55 years old. I have a wife with four daughters and a son. I bought her for myself. CNN was granted rare access to film the final payment and handover. The buyer asked for it to take place at a house in his village and not the camp for security reasons. He paid a total of 200,000 Afghanis, just over 2,000 US dollars for Pawana, in land, sheep and cash. This is your bride, please take care of her, says Pawana's father. Of course I will take care of her, replies the man. As he drags her away, she whimpers. <laughs> Moments later, she digs her heels into the dirt, refusing to go, but it's hopeless. Too young to wed, then organised to have Pawana, her mother and siblings removed from the camp with the father's permission. Their four-hour journey to neighbouring Harad province was broken up with some childhood fun. <laughs> before arriving at the motel. For children who've only ever lived in a tent, the novelty of being warm, fed and safe wasn't wearing off. <laughs> they rescued me. They've given me a new life, says Pawana. I thank the charity for helping me. A few days later, they moved into the safe house. Pawana's mother, 27-year-old Reza Ghul, has never lived in a house. To be sure that Prophet Muhammad wasn't the only one who was allowed to marry a prepubescent girl, Allah revealed Quran, Surah al talaq verse 4. And if you are in doubt as to the prescribed period for such of your women as have despaired of monthly courses, then know that the prescribed period for them is three months, and also for such as do not have their monthly courses yet. And as for those who are with child, their period shall be until they are delivered of their burden. And whoso fears Allah, he will provide facilities for him in his affair. The following story is from Tafsir Tabari, about the event behind the revelation of Quran, Surah al talaq verse 4. One day, Prophet Muhammad chatted with his companions. As usual, the topic of conversation was about women and sexual intercourse. This is Allah's law regarding idat, which is waiting period of a female must observe before she can remarry. Allah said in Quran that a Muslima has to wait for three months before she can remarry. This is important to be sure that she is not pregnant with her previous husband when she remarry. One of Prophet's companions named Ubay ibn Qa'ab asked a question. O oh Rasul Allah, there are some females that you do not mention about their idda, such as old women, small girls, and pregnant women. Oh. Okay then, here is Quran, Surah al talaq verse 4. And as for those of your women, who have despaired of menstruation, which are old women, if you have a doubt, their prescribed time shall be three months. And of those two who have not had their courses, which are little girls who are too young to have menstruation, their waiting period shall also be three months. And as for the pregnant women, their term the conclusion of their prescribed waiting period, if divorced or if their spouses be dead, shall be when they deliver. And whoever fears God he will make matters ease for him in this world and in the hereafter. From Prophet Muhammad's explanation, we understand that the sentence for such as do not have their monthly courses yet is about little girls who are too young to have menstruation. This means, a Muslim can marry a girl at any age, from a day old to older. Yes, with Quran, Surah al talaq verse 4, the Prophet declared that there is no age limit to marry a girl in Islam. This information is emphasized in Sharia law book titled Reliance of the Traveler or Umdat al-Salik, one of the most renowned classical manuals of fiqh, 
in page 567, law number N9.2. A waiting period is obligatory for a woman divorced after intercourse, whether the husband and wife are prepubescent, have reached puberty, or one has and the other has not. Number N9.9 .9 reads, the waiting period for a woman who does not menstruate, whether prepubescent or postmenopausal, is three months. We can clearly see here that, in Islam, marriage to prepubescent girls is allowed and regulated, with divorce rules for such little girls in operation. The implication of this law can be very damaging physically for underage girls, and this is acknowledged in the same book, page 592. The Indemnity for Bodily Injuries A full indemnity is also paid for injuries which paralyze these members, or for injuring the perishoneal wall between vagina and rectum so they become one aperture. What does this mean, guys? This is a medical anatomy model of a girl's lower body part. The forced penetration by an adult man to the underage girl causes her small vagina to rupture and rip apart, up to her rectum. You can imagine the pain that the little girl suffers because of this action. This is another Sharia book titled Heavenly Ornaments or Bahisti Ziwar that also mentions this type of injury. The paragraph talks about ghusl or washing ritual after having sex. If a woman is underage, but not so small, that if one has intercourse with her, there is a fear of the vaginal tissues tearing, to such extent that the vagina and anus, will virtually come together, then by the insertion of the glands of the penis into her vagina, ghusl will become fard on the man if he has reached the age of puberty. However if there is the aforementioned fear, in a very minor girl, then mere insertion of the penis, does not render gusel obligatory. This means, that if the man is an adult, and he is worried that inserting his genital to a prepubescent girl, or an infant or a baby girl, can cause the tearing of the vagina to the anus, then just insert the head of his penis. This is really sick. We can read a similar explanation from another Sharia book titled A Digest of Muhammadan Law, Part 2, translated by Neil Bailey. This is about the marriage law in Islam, page 26. When a man has had sexual intercourse with a girl under the age of nine years, and has ruptured the parts. You know what parts we are talking about here. It is her vagina, tearing apart because of what the adult man did to her. It is unlawful for him to have further connection with her, but she is not released from her ties, if connected with him by marriage or slavery. This means that if the vagina ruptures, then the man should not continue the coitus. But that doesn't mean that the girl can divorce the man if the man is her husband, or that the girl is free if the man is her slave master. If no rupture has taken place, the prohibition is not incurred according to the most valid opinion. This means that if no rupture happens, then the man can go ahead to continue with the coitus. The fact that the rupture incident is mentioned repeatedly in many Sharia books means that such horrific accidents happen often during child marriages. Islamic law doesn't protect the safety or uphold the honor of little girls. Quran, Surah Al-Talaq, verse 4, opens up opportunities for sexual predators to destroy numerous small girls, morally and physically, since 1400 years ago up to now.